This program is brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Israel turns 60. Israelis celebrate, but Palestinians demonstrate. Will the refugees be allowed to return home? Answers to this question and more on Link TV's Mosaic Intelligence Report. Celebrations have been taking place across Israel to mark the 60th anniversary of the founding of the state. Israeli families enjoyed fireworks, concerts, and aerial display, while countries around the world, principally those that helped create Israel, showered it with words of admiration and congratulations. Earlier this week, British Prime Minister Gordon Brown congratulated Israel on its 60th anniversary of independence, calling the state's creation one of the greatest achievements of the 20th century. George W. Bush, along with present and past European dignitaries, is expected to attend the festivities. Not far from the celebratory atmosphere, more than 20,000 Palestinians, most of whom are Israeli citizens, march on the site of a deserted former Palestinian village of Safouria, near Nazareth, to reiterate the right of return. They carried banners that read, Your independence is our Nakba, or catastrophe in English. Many of them wore the key of their abandoned homes around their necks. The demonstrators were confronted by Israeli police and several were arrested, beaten, or suffered from tear gas inhalation. I am Mohammed from the village of Iraq al Machine. This key represents my strong determination to return to my homeland, Iraq al Machine. God willing, all Palestinian young men will return to their homeland. Most likely, George W. Bush and other dignitaries will not be taken on a tour of the vacated village of Safouria or the more than 500 Palestinian villages that were depopulated and destroyed. They won't visit any of the many Palestinian refugee camps sprinkled all over the West Bank and Gaza. In 1948, an estimated 700,000 Palestinians were forced to flee their homes as a result of the creation of the State of Israel. These dignitaries will be driven on bypass roads to circumvent the ugly wall that has destroyed the landscape and carved up Palestinian farms and villages, locking Palestinians themselves behind it like caged animals. Or they may pretend not to see it or simply make excuses and justifications like it has made Israel safer. Yet 60 years later, military service remains a mainstay of the Jewish state with a hefty budget of some $14 billion in 2008, comprising around 17% of the state's budget. Over 70% of the Israelis say they would like and prefer to live here. It's a very high percentage compared with any other country. So deep in their heart, they are satisfied. But they feel at the same time they have to be dissatisfied, to try to improve, to criticize. Not too bad. Meanwhile, Israel's milestone comes at a time of increasing frustration with the Middle East peace process. Many Israelis are disappointed that successive peace negotiations have not led to wider regional stability. For Palestinians, it has been 60 years of pain, of hopes constantly dashed, 60 years of uncertainty, exile, misery, and Nakba, catastrophe. I'm Jamal Dejani for the Mosaic Intelligence Report. To learn more about this program or to share your thoughts, visit us at linktv.org slash mosaic. This program was brought to you by Link TV for educational and non-commercial use only. Link TV is the only U.S. television network devoted to global and national news with uncompromising documentaries and diverse cultural programs, programs which connect you to the world.